Hello, I'm Steve Maskery and welcome to Workshop Essentials. As you can see, I'm not in the workshop at the moment. I'm actually on site because I'm going to build a wardrobe to stand in this alcove here. It's quite a nice size. It's 2.1 metres wall to wall, but I don't want it to look like a built-in. So I'm going to keep the sides in a little bit so that I don't foul the skirt in and I have good access to my power point and my light switch here. In terms of the depth this way, the cabinets have got to be big enough to take a coat hanger with a jacket on it and a cover and a little bit of clearance. So that brings it to about here. But I don't want to have big swinging doors that come into the room. It's not a big bedroom. So I'm going to keep the doors narrow at just 475 millimetres. This is an old house and nothing in it is straight or square. And this floor isn't perfectly level either. If I put a big empty flexible box on the floor, and that's what a wardrobe is, it's likely to distort under its own weight. And if that happens, then there's no way I'm going to get the doors to hang properly. So I'm going to stand it on an adjustable plinth on a board in order to keep everything nice and straight and vertical. This floor is carpeted and it's quite springy. And I don't want my wardrobe to be swaying a little bit. So I'm going to put the plinth on a board and I hope that that will stabilize it. If it does, great. If it doesn't, I'll anchor it to the back wall. But I don't really want to have to do that unless it's absolutely necessary. There is one other very practical consideration. And that is, how do I get it from the workshop at the bottom of the garden to the bedroom? This is the fly in the ointment. My staircase has got a half landing and it's a full 180 degree return around here. And that on its own wouldn't be a problem if the house hadn't been mucked about with at some point in its history. Somebody, in their infinite wisdom, decided that it was a good idea to knock a hole in the bedroom wall up there in order to house a television set in the days when tellies were as deep as they were wide. And the result is that instead of the ceiling going to the top of the house, it's just six foot six or two meters above the floor here. So anything that's bigger than that has got to be brought up the staircase at an angle and manipulated around this banister, newel post, and this edge of the ceiling here. I'm gonna try and make life a little bit easier for myself by making the back panel of the biggest cabinet in two halves. And that way, I hope I can get everything up the stairs without bashing the new wardrobe or indeed my nice new paintwork here. There's always something, isn't there? So with all those considerations in mind, I've come up with a design. I'm going to have an adjustable plinth with three cabinets on it. One for long hanging, a double with two rails for shirts, and the third one, a mixture of shelves and drawers and there'll be some kind of coving around the top. So, time to get down to the workshop. I'm not actually yet ready to start cutting up pieces of wood. Although it's necessary to have a good drawing with dimensions on, it's not a very good idea to work just from this. It's much better to work from a full-sized drawing. In the UK, we call this a rod, if you're in North America, you'll know it as a story stick. It's the same thing. So I've got a piece of melamine board and I'm going to put all my horizontal dimensions along the front of the cabinet on one side and all my vertical dimensions on the other side. So I need some tools. I've got a tape measure and a couple of rulers, a square, pencil, a rubber for making mistakes, from getting rid of the mistakes, uh, or an eraser if you prefer. I do know the transatlantic translations of that. Uh, some thinners for cleaning off. And one of these. Now this is a pencil gauge. If you haven't got one, make yourself one. They're not difficult. 
If you need plans, I've got them on Workshop Essentials Volume 1, I think. But it is just the most useful tool for laying out. I use this on every single project. It's just like a marking gauge with a pencil in it. But you can just run it along the edge. It's got a lip on it here. It can run along the edge and do parallel lines very nicely. And this particular one, if I can just take that off, has got a couple of pins so I can follow a curved surface if I'm doing something like a um, circular table or something. But these are just worth their weight in gold. So I'm going to start by doing all the horizontal dimensions along the front of the wardrobe. I'm not going to have the end of the board as my datum because on top of the plinth and underneath the cabinets there's a flat frame and that sticks out a little bit. So I'm going to start by setting the side of my cabinet to be 50 millimetres in from the edge of this board. Like that. And the other side of the board, the other side of the wardrobe, the wardrobe is 1900 wide, so I need to mark out at 1950 because of that 50 millimetres over there. And that gives me the overall width of my cabinets. The next thing is to draw the um, horizontal lines for the top of the plinth and the top of the flat frame, which is also the underside of the, of the cabinets. So the first one goes in at 85, which is the height of my plinth. That goes along here like this. And the top of the flat frame, which will be 105 millimetres, because the frame will end up 20 millimetres or so thick. There we go. I now need to put in the um, sides of the individual cabinets. So my cabinet width is 475 millimetres. So from there to there, 475. And that gives me the right-hand side of the left-hand cabinet and the left-hand side of the centre cabinet. And mark out 475 from there as well. And if I've done this correctly, the distance between those two marks will be 950, which is the width of the centre cabinet, because that's a double, and that's exactly right. And this gives me confidence, then, that what I've got in, laid out in front of me is an accurate representation of what I intend the finished article to look like. So, they can go in. Next, the material I'm going to be using is 19mm MDF, veneered with oak. So I've set my um, compasses, you could use dividers, you could use a ruler, to 19mm and that gives me the thicknesses of each panel. Like that. And then I can put in the panel thicknesses. Like that. There's one left to do up here. There we go. And finally, I use my pencil gauge again to put in the bottom panel of the wardrobes. Now, this isn't actually necessary for the horizontal dimensions, actually, but it does help me to see, in my mind's eye, what this is going to look like. We've got the police helicopter again. They've been there all day. Goodness knows what's going on. Right. And wow, this is starting to come alive. I can see this and it just looks like the wardrobe. It's what I had in mind. That's just, just great.
So that's the horizontal dimensions across the front, and all the vertical ones go on the other side. We've got the plinth, the top of the frame, and the floor of the cabinet. All labelled. And there's a datum mark just so I don't accidentally mesh from the wrong end. <laughs> Save something very embarrassing. And then right up at this end, I've got the top of the cabinet. And I could, if I wanted to, put the cornice on here as well, the, the crown moulding. But I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do with that yet. I don't need that at this stage. Apart from helping me to avoid making the mistake of mixing up 68 with 89, uh, using a full-size rod has lots of other advantages. And one of them is that it shows me things that a paper drawing doesn't show up. So, for example, I've got all the front-to-back dimensions on this rod here. And as soon as I drew it, I recognised that there was something that could be improved. I'd originally designed it on my computer without the doors on. And it looked fine. But the front of my plinth here is flush with the front of my cabinet sides. And it looks fine on paper, but as soon as I drew it out full size, I could see that by the time I put my adjustable feet in there, the feet would actually be not very far apart for such a tall and heavy piece of furniture. The further apart they are, the greater the stability. So I've moved my plinth out forward so it's flush with the doors rather than flush with the fronts of the cabinets. And that extra 20 millimetres will give me a little bit more stability. And there's no way that I would spot that from a paper drawing. But on a full-size rod, it's as plain as the nose on your face. So, I think I really am ready to start cutting up pieces of wood now. But I've got to get my table saw set up for ripping. I've got to get my router table set up for cutting tongs. I need to cut a sample groove so that I can make sure the tongue fits. So while I do all that, I suggest you go and have a cup of tea. And I'll see you in the Workshop Essentials workshop next time. Thank you very much for watching. Until then, enjoy your workshop. Cheerio.